Thank you, Chris, for those kind words. And good morning, everyone. It is a particular pleasure to be here today on the 10th anniversary of the FDNY Honor Roll of Life ceremony. As Chris mentioned, I've been involved with this event since its inception. 10 years ago, firefighter Mark Kallwasser, Mark. And then Fire Commissioner Nick Scapetta came together with the idea that young firefighters should be encouraged and we know what happens when the commissioner encourages the probies. Should be, should be encouraged to join our Be The Match Bone Marrow Registry, as well as to participate in our blood drives. That program was an immediate success, which was no surprise, but was still highly gratifying. The brave men and women of the FDNY never fail to answer the call. Saving lives is in their blood. Under the guidance of two outstanding fire commissioners, Nick Scapetta, who is now, as many of you know, uh, sits on the board of the New York Blood Center, and, his, and the current commissioner, Sal Cassano, my friend, we have seen 162 firefighters donate, giving them of themselves in this way, as well so that others might live. As Dr. Hillier pointed out, this is in addition to the more than 15,000 life-saving blood donations from the FDNY over the past decade. It has been a remarkable partnership, and I think that's because saving lives, answering the call, is in the DNA of the New York Blood Center as well. As we celebrate our own 50th anniversary this year, we're thrilled to be using modern technology to bring people together in very positive ways, in ways that save lives. Through all our efforts in the fields of hematology, transfusion medicine, and cellular therapies, the NYBC is engaged in cutting-edge research, creating innovative new blood products, and ultimately saving lives. This is one of my passions, to move life-saving innovation from the academic laboratory to clinical practice, from research to helping people. This is exactly what we're doing at the New York Blood Center. In addition to our bone marrow registry, NYBC is also home to the first and largest umbilical cord blood bank in the world. We're a world-class research and educational institution, as well as a local, regional, national, and global resource. But we never forget that our partnerships with organizations such as FDNY are essential to fulfilling our mission. In the end, you at the FDNY are our true heroes. So this morning, as we do each year, we are going to meet individuals who were cured of life-threatening conditions because someone at the FDNY stepped up and donated marrow. These reunions are always an emotional reminder of why it is vital that people sign up for the bone marrow registry. Registering is as simple as a cheek swab, but as you will hear, it can make the most meaningful impact in someone's life. Before we begin our introduction of the donors and recipients, however, there's one additional item uh, to present. Since 2010, Sal Cassano has been the commissioner of the New York City Fire Department, and as I mentioned, has been a key supporter of our FDNY bone marrow registry efforts. Commissioner Cassano, as many of you know, rose through the ranks of the department, holding every uniformed rank during his 40-year career as the FDNY's Chief of Operations and Chief of Department and as Commissioner since 2010, he has been instrumental in rebuilding the department after the tragic events of 9-11. <laughs> we thought that today's ceremony would be an appropriate time to recognize Commissioner Cassano for all the work that he has also done for the NYBC and the Bone Marrow Registry Program over the years. He's a great supporter and a great friend, and I can tell you, as one of his honorary chiefs, He's an excellent commanding officer as well. So I'm pleased to present the following award to Commissioner Cassano. It reads, New York Blood Center recognizes Commissioner Sal Cassano for promoting blood and bone marrow donations during his tenure as commissioner. 6,500 life-saving units of blood were donated at FDNY blood drives. 37 FDNY members donated marrow. Over 500 new members joined the bone marrow registry. Your efforts? have helped save the lives of countless patients, January 2014. Sal, come on up. 
to receive this well-deserved recognition and our thanks. Uh, thank you, Howard. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, that was a little bit of a surprise. It's not really good to surprise the commissioner. <laughs> but uh, just a couple of corrections. Uh, the registrants have grown because we've also gotten every EMT and paramedic that's come into the department uh, to join the program. Like when the commissioner talks to the new class of EMTs, we talk about it. They join. It's surprising, but they do. Uh, and this year we have an EMT that's a recipient, a donor. So the program has grown exponentially because it's not only firefighters now, but it's EMTs and paramedics as well. And eventually, if I can get the civilian staff on board, it'll really grow. So that's my next venture, to get the civilian part of the fire department to join the registry. But uh, as Howard mentioned, all those, those accolades are not for me. It's very good I joined. But I will make a vow, Howard, that uh, in my continued tenure as the fire commissioner, I will raise those numbers. So thank you. Well, that is really great news because I know when Sal makes a commitment, it's going to happen. And now we begin what is always the most special part of our program. As we've said over the years, our FDNY bone marrow program has saved so many lives. Thus, on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the Honor Roll of Life ceremony, we thought it made sense to reintroduce you to one of the recipients who benefited so greatly from the FDNY's efforts. Alex Maldonado, was born in February of 2004, just as our FDNY program was getting underway. At 10 months, he was diagnosed with renal tubular acidosis and osteoporosis. Without getting into the details, that's not a good thing. Only a bone marrow transplant was believed could save his life. In 2006, his family learned that there was a match. New York City firefighter Billy Zask Billy had joined the Be The Match registry earlier that very year while at the Fire Academy. On January 31, 2007, he donated his bone marrow to Alex. And in early 2008, right here in this room, they met for the very first time. Billy says he can still recall to this day what it felt like to hug Alex. He now has a wife, Terry, and two beautiful children of his own. A two and a half year old son, Ryan, and a 15-month-old daughter, Erin. He says that especially as a father now, he can't begin to imagine what Alex went through and feels honored to have played a role in his recovery. Alex, by the way, is now 10 years old and in good health. His favorite food, like so many of his contemporaries at that age, is white rice and ketchup. And like many young boys his age, Alex enjoys playing his Nintendo DS and other electronics and watching cartoons. I'd now like to invite Billy and Alex and his family up for their second reunion uh, nearly a decade after they first met in this room in 2006. He's a little shy. Thank you.
I'd la now like to invite jo John Chimpa to the stage. John? John, who is now 66, was born and raised in Manchester, New Hampshire. When he retired in 2004, he moved to Lakeland, Florida, between Orlando and Tampa. He points out that he'd really never been sick a day in his life before April of 2010, when he was diagnosed with myelodysplastic syndrome, or MDS, a cancer of the bone marrow cells. He started aggressive chemotherapy, but was told he had only six months to live unless he could find a bone marrow donor. In 2012, thank God, he found a match with us, firefighter Christopher Howard. Like Billy's ask, Christopher Howard joined our Be The Match registry while at the academy. Christopher's father had died on 9-11, and his father's sacrifice inspired him to join the department just a few years later. In joining the registry, he says he was following the legacy of firefighter Terry Farrell, a good friend of his father's, who was one of the first FDNY members to donate marrow and was instrumental in helping found this program. We also lost Terry Farrell on 9-11. Christopher sees his own involvement as a way to carry on Terry's legacy. He says it is incredibly rewarding to have such a life-altering impact on someone even if they've never met. Quote, being a firefighter, he said, that is what we live for, to help people in need. John, by the way, comes from pretty hardy stock on March 12th of this year, his father will celebrate his 100th birthday. And thanks to firefighter Christopher Howard, John will be there to celebrate with him. <laughs> They've been in contact since the donation, but John has always wanted to meet Christopher in person to thank him. And this is that moment. Christopher, come on up. This is a wonderful and emotional reminder of why it is vital that we join the Bone Marrow Registry. In fact, those who are interested can join at the table set up in the back of the room. I'd like to also remind members of the media that the donors and recipients will be available for a press conference in the rear of the room. Thank you all for coming this year. Thank you to Commissioner Cassano, Chief Kilduff, Mary McLaughlin, and Dr. Hillier for all of your exemplary leadership and your efforts in helping to promote blood and bone marrow donations. I look forward to celebrating this important occasion with you all in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you.